So are your keys are all worn out, your locks worn out, maybe you got like three or four different keys opening up all the different doors and glove boxes. Today I'm at Brothers Tech Center to show you how easy it is to replace all your lock sets and all of the different options you have. There's a lot more than what you would think. You stay tuned. Okay, so let's take a look at our options on our glove box doors first. There's basically just two. You have no key at all, or you have a keyed entry. You might want to go with a keyed entry if you're going to be taking your truck uh, someplace and you're going to have a valet. You can just give him the ignition and you don't have to worry about getting into your glove box door. So that's one of your options. If getting into your door handles, now a lot of the trucks only came with one keyed entry. The other one was just um, shut off. There wasn't a way to do it. But you can get a dual keyed entry and then you can be able to get into your doors either way either side now your 47 to uh, 51 it's got a slightly different door key entry here it's not in the handle and also on your 67 72s it's not in the handle uh, 73 to 87 is not in the handle so these go on a little bit differently um, you can also get keys so that your door and your ignition switch are all on the same key. So your door and your ignition switch would be one key and then your glove box would be another key. Don't like that? Want to even reduce it more? Then you can go with a master kit here. It'll come with the ignition switch, the glove box, and your doors all are being operated on one key. So you got a lot of different options. You got a couple of different years you're gonna choose from. Go on the website, see which works best for you and any of the other peripherals that might go along with it at the same time. You got door regulators, uh, glove box, door stops, and things like that. So get everything in one shot. Now, I'm gonna show you how to replace the um, glove box door here. It's pretty simple. Just one little screw on the back is holding this bracket on right here that holds onto the glove box door thing. Now what you got to do is just push this in, your button, and then it's going to make this retract right here. A lot of times it won't retract enough and you're going to have to help it a little bit more in order to be able to get it out. So with that out, all you got to do is simply push the button in again, make the little button here go down. go in like that you'll just put your old bracket right back on put the screw right on there and then this is all set so you can see that one's a pretty simple Simon right there and you're all set to go now doors are a little bit more kitschy um, the original components are held into here with just a little spring and so normally what you want to do to get that out is I'll shoot some oil in here to uh, get it a little bit easier to work with and I, what I want you to notice is you see this piece right here I'm able to push that down and when I push that down then I can get to this ring in here that's holding it down and all I got to do is just get it out of its uh, little slot just enough to uh, pry it out the rest of the way. You kind of want to get to one of the ends uh, so it's easier to pull out. I'll show you what I mean here in a second. Okay, so you can see I got it out of the, the, the ring that it's holding in and then I'll just go ahead and gently pull it up a little bit more. You can go I'll also um, go like this. So sometimes these will be rusted and come out tough but that is what this looks like right here. So when I'm pressing on this spring to get it out, I don't want to press right here because it's not going to work. I got to get somewhere around this edge here, press down for it enough to get out of the ridge that is sitting right here. Now when you get your um, key set, it's got something different in there. It's got a C-clip. These are actually easier to work with. So I like these a little bit better, but you do need a tool like this that will simply um, 
clamp that down and make it a lot easier to install. So I'll show you that in just a bit too. So I'm not going to be using this old spring or this old clip right here. You got a uh, good thing to keep this laying to the side here because uh, it, sometimes you just forget how they go together. Even me with all the time that I've got doing this, I still forget. I'm a little dyslexic. You've got a little rubber gasket that comes in uh, the kit and that is going to go right over this like that. And then we're going to go ahead and install this. Now uh, you'll notice that this has grooves in it here on the sides and you'll notice how this has all kinds of extensions sticking out. So all you got to do is just put it in a couple of different ways and it'll work one way or the other. You want to make sure that your key entry right here is straight up and down and that you can press on this and it's not jamming up or anything like that. I also like to put a little bit of grease in this when I'm assembling it but I don't have one right now. Now you got to notice that there's two different rings right here. You've got one that's got this hole in it right here and this other one that's slotted. So the one that has the hole in it, that's going to go on first, right like that. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to install our spring. And then we're going to install this guy right here. Now this guy gets installed um, exactly like you're seeing it right here. You want to notice that it's got these protrusions on the end right here. Those protrusions fit right into the groove uh, on either side right here just like that. And the reason that's like that is so that when you see these edges on right here, so when all of these, when that slot lines up with these edges, then you're going to be able to push the door and open it up. But if this was turned 90 degrees, now it won't go and it's locked. So that's how it works internally. So now I'll go ahead and I'll install this. Again, I want you to notice how that is installed. It goes like this, not like this. Okay, it's going like that. And then you go ahead and press it down. Now this part here gets a little bit um, sticky. Uh, you might want to clamp this into your vise or something like that with pieces of wood on the side so you don't do any damage to it. Normally I just try to wrestle everything in my hand. So... Um, I'm just going to wrestle everything in my hand. And the little clip right here, let me set this up correctly so that it will work on that. This tool here, pretty inexpensive. Um, pet boys, anybody carries this thing. It's not a big deal. Okay. Let me see. Yeah. All right. So all I got to do is put these two little prongs right here, right into those two little holes there. And now when I squeeze it together, the C clip will squeeze together also. And now I can go ahead and install it in there, get it down to that slot, and um, pop it in. Now let's say, for instance, you don't have this thing right here. Um, if I was going to install it, it'd just go like that. So that's a pretty easy deal. But let's say you don't have that. So what we would do is, if you're going to install this guy, you just go ahead and put it in about like that. And then you'll use a screwdriver to just push it in and down at the same time. Once you get it into the basic uh, orifice of the handle, then all you got to do is just push it down until it goes into the groove down there. So you can hear that click there. Now you know you're set. So that's our locked. And that's our unlocked. Locked, unlocked. So you can see that's pretty nice and easy to do. Now let's move to the ignition switch. Now I took the key tumbler out of this because I want you to see this little brass bushing or a little brass button right here. Can you see that? 
So when you take your old one out of the dash of your truck, what's going to happen is there is a large bezel that screws onto this. And what happens is you can't take that bezel off if this little chrome guy is still in there. So you have to take your key out in order to be able to take your bezel out in order to be able to take your ignition switch out. So how you're gonna do that is you put your key in and then you're gonna turn it back like you're putting it on the accessories, okay? And when you do that, you'll notice that there's this little hole right here. And that little hole should line up with the little brass button that's in here. And when you press that, it should release the key. Now, sometimes you're going to have to uh, turn it a little bit more or jiggle with it or work with it for a while. Um, this can be a bit frustrating. It can take time because a lot of times what happens on that brass button in there is that it's just corroded over the years and now um, it's just not going to come out. So sometimes I've had to, you know, just destroy the ignition switch. So you might want to try to take this apart before you order anything. See if you do any damage to this. Order it at the same exact time so that you don't have to uh, get halfway through your project and then find out that um, you don't have everything and you got to get back on the phone and wait and all that kind of stuff. So um, still playing with this guy. He's can be a little bit more of a problem when it's not in the um, truck. It's a bit harder to hold on to it and get it all out at the same time. But that's how that goes. So again, I'll put a little bit of grease on these when I put them all together. Don't get carried away with it. Uh, makes it a little bit too sloppy. So you got your glove box door. You got your um, door handle in key and you got your ignition key so you check out all your choices on our website make sure you order everything at the same time make sure you come back to this YouTube channel because next Tuesday I'm going to show you even more stuff that you just have to see subscribe and check us out on Instagram and Facebook because it's pretty cool there too we'll see you next Tuesday